A short story, but one that shines a lar light on a larger issue, a, a small thing that tells us something big. Let me tell you about a news story I came across on the CBC website. It's a typical low-information, left-wing propaganda story. I mean, just look at that headline, Federal Government Falling Further Behind on Emissions Reductions Audit Finds. There's about five things wrong with the report. I shouldn't even call it a report. It's propaganda. But that is not my point today. Instead, look at this. Scroll down on the website for a moment to look at the picture there. Do you see those huge chimneys belching smoke? And read the caption under that photo. The conservative government does not have an overall plan to achieve its greenhouse gas emission targets and is all but certain to miss them, Canada's environment commissioner says in her fall report. So it's about Canada and those damn conservatives. And of course, the CBC mentions Canada's oil and gas industry several times in this story. And so that's obviously Canadian oil and gas smokestacks. I mean, probably at the oil sands, right? I mean, the caption of that photo says Canada and conservatives and Canada's greenhouse gas emissions. And the story mentions Canada's oil and gas. I mean, what a great little anti-conservative, anti-Alberta, anti-oil sand story and picture too. The kind of thing that any CBC intern is taught to write on their first day working at the government broadcaster. It was the ultimate CBC story, scratching all of their itches at once. So the CBC put it, believe it or not, on their aboriginal Twitter feed, just cause. I mean, nothing aboriginal about the story at all, but why not, eh? and use that gorgeous, hideous picture. I call it oil sands porn, right? Because it gets a revulsion, an emotional reaction. So they tweeted that picture. Oh, and there it is on their CBC Politics Twitter feed too. Love that photo, so powerful. Damn Albertans, damn conservatives. Heather Schofield of the Canadian Press Newswire tweeted that CBC story and that same photo too. Oh, and the Liberal Party started tweeting that same photo too. I mean, it could have been written by their anti-oil sands liberal policy unit, actually, I guess it was, being the CBC. That picture was retweeted and shared by tens of thousands of people, seen by tens of thousands of people, maybe hundreds of thousands of people saw it, who were all outraged that Canada's Conservatives would let the oil sands spew, spew that kind of pollution in the air. I mean, just look at that picture one more time. But have you ever been to the oil sands? Have you ever seen that smokestack up there? Oh, I concede to you that there are smokestacks in the oil sands. They don't emit a lot of smoke, mainly steam and hot air, which is why the most terrifying environmental propaganda pictures are taken during our Canadian winters. It makes warm air look like smoke or something bad. But there was just something about this picture that seemed wrong to me. I mean, the sky is the sky, smokestacks are smokestacks, but that smoke in the picture, real smoke, not hot air or steam, it just didn't look like what I've seen with my own eyes in the oil sands. Now, I'm no Toronto CBC 22-year-old intern who's never been west of Hamilton and who has all the expertise you'd expect from a vegetarian studies major with a women's studies minor. I mean, I'm just some guy. But I just didn't buy this photo. Well, the photo had a credit on it. The photographer's name was Peter Andrews from the Reuters news agency. So after a couple of minutes on Googling, well, take a look at this. This is the original Reuters story written back in 2009 called U.S. Cap and Trade Plans Risk European Mistakes. And there's that picture. Hang on, what? No, no nasty Canadian conservatives? No Stephen Harper? No, no oil sands? And it's not a 2014 news story slamming Canada at all? Well, what did Peter Andrews describe his photo as in that Reuters news story in 2009. Here, let me read to you his caption from 2009. The chimneys of Belkatov power station near Belkatov, Europe's largest thermal power plant, emit fumes, May 7, 2009. Europe, a thermal power plant, as in coal. Yeah, actually one of the biggest coal-fired power plants in all of Europe. Here's another picture of that power plant from the side. You can see the whole thing, how massive it is. It has its own railroad tracks to keep that coal coming. You can see those two chimneys with the red and white stripes there on the right of the photo. And let me be clear, I got nothing against this power plant. Every lump of coal they burn means they're not buying natural gas from Vladimir Putin in Russia. This power plant doesn't just mean energy for Poland, it means freedom from their former occupier, the Russians. But that is not my point today. My point today is that the CBC is not satisfied with mere anti-oil sense propaganda, with merely writing biased, one-sided, misleading words about so-called global warming. They're not satisfied with merely quoting a partisan hack attacking the conservatives. That is not enough for them. They have to fabricate part of their story, the key part, because their story is not dramatic enough. People don't believe their global warming BS enough. We're sick of it. 
So instead of 500 boring words about a boring political hack in boring Ottawa, boringly calling Stephen Harper and the oil sands names, someone, some little liar in the bosom of the CBC thought they'd spice things up a bit, thought they'd lie. Oh, it's not really a lie. Those chimneys really do exist. That picture is real. And even the capture under the picture on the CBC website isn't really a lie. It doesn't come right out and say boldly, this is what Stephen Harper does. I'll read you the CBC's official caption again. The Conservative government does not have an overall plan to achieve its greenhouse gas emission targets and is all but certain to miss them, Canada's Environment Commissioner says in her fall report. Under a picture of a Polish coal-burning power plant, cropped so that you cannot see that it's obviously not in Canada. My friends, this is not a story about global warming or the oil sands or the Conservatives. This is a story about Canada's state broadcaster that vacuums a billion dollars a year out of your pocket for their annual corporate bailout. This is a story of how you are forced to pay for their propaganda. This is just more proof that you cannot trust a word the CBC says or even a photo that they publish.